It feels like almost an eternity since the last time we heard anything from Infinity Ward or other Call of Duty developers who work on Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0, but this week we got ourselves a blog post detailing some of the things we can expect to see for the launch of Season 2, which is on February 15th. Now, in this blog post, they didn't talk about really any of the content that we can see within Season 2, but they are going to be coming out with a blog post before Season 2 that will have the roadmap detailing everything that we can expect to see that's added to Multiplayer, Warzone, and of course, DMZ. In this blog post, there were some bugs and glitches that they brought up and they explained why they were causing issues in the game, and usually we don't get reasons why they were causing issues, and so I'm happy to see that in the blog post. I hope they keep doing this moving forward. That would be very informative and helpful, but one thing I wasn't happy to see in this blog post is the information we got for multiplayer. It seemed like the information we got for multiplayer compared to the information we got for DMZ and Warzone Battle Royale, right? It just seemed like it was so lackluster and that they just really didn't have a focus on it whatsoever. So I'm very concerned that we are not going to be getting a lot of content for multiplayer this upcoming season. And that is honestly to be expected. It's really not a surprise at this point, And that's not a good thing. I, being having this type of predictability for multiplayer at this point in time for Call of Duty, it's getting really frustrating and you can definitely tell in a, for a so many content creators, Call of Duty content creators, on how frustrated we are with the lack of support we're getting for multiplayer, especially since this is the game that we actually bought with our own personal money and not something we download for free like Warzone. Not that I have anything against Warzone whatsoever. It's just really unfortunate that multiplayer has been getting shafted for quite some time now, and it's really sad to see that. But I really want to talk about DMZ in this video because there are some good things being updated for DMZ this next season, but there's also something not so good, which people have been talking about quite a bit for the past 24 hours that I've seen on Twitter. So the good things for DMZ are a new exclusion zone, which we are assuming is going to be the new resurgence map. We don't know what the resurgence map is going to be. We don't know if it's brand new map that we haven't seen yet, or if it's a returning resurgence map such as Rebirth Island or Fortune's Keep. I personally would love to see Fortune's Keep return, mostly because it didn't have a long life cycle in the first war zone, and I think it deserves to have some more uh, time in the sunshine because I thought Fortune's Keep was a great map, and I think it can play well here within Warzone 2, and I don't see any reason not to bring it back, honestly. Also, we are getting new missions, and I imagine these are going to be some higher tier missions, so they are going to be difficult missions to complete, but we do get rewards for completing missions, so I'm curious to see what those rewards might be. Also, they are going to be adjusting the difficulty for all the missions across the board, and so they are actually going to be lowering the difficulty, making it easier for us to complete them, get them done faster, and of course earn our insured weapon slots quicker, which is great to see considering I have not earned my second insured weapon slot yet, so that would be really nice. However, as nice as that would be, I actually won't be able to earn my second insured weapon slot faster because apparently that insured weapon slots and tier mission progression is going to be reset at the start of season two. And I am unsure if this is something they intend to do each season. They didn't say that in their blog post and they said that they're going to have more details within their next blog post regarding this reset. And so no joke, you guys, all of your insured weapon slots that you have unlocked, so your second and third one that you have unlocked and all the tier missions that you've completed are not going to be completed anymore. You're going to start from the tier one missions in each faction now. And this is a little upsetting. And it's not because I don't, I really don't think it's because they're giving us completely do, new missions to go for. That could be the case. That could be the case. And that would make so much more sense to me to give us completely new missions to go for with different rewards uh, for each season. That just kind of makes more sense rather than adding more missions. But they've already said they're adding more missions. So it doesn't seem like that actually is going to be the case. It seems like we're going to have to go through the same missions we already do, the same challenges. And But however, I guess this time they're going to make them easier so it won't be as 
as hard to get through them as it was the first time, I suppose. But it's still frustrating to some of us who did actually earn those weapon slots already, and we already got through a lot of the different missions, and maybe some people have already completed all of them. I know some people have completed every mission. And it's going to suck trying to do some of those again because there are some pretty hard missions to actually go through. And I think this is not a great idea. I think the reason why they're doing this is so they can be more in line with Escape from Tarkov, which is a game I have never played before, but I do know about it. I know that it's an extraction type mode. I mean, that's kind of where Call of Duty got their idea with DMZ, I guess, right? And I know Escape from Tarkov players like having everything be reset or they like starting fresh because it's a lot more fun trying to use weaker weapons and take opponents out with those uh, and not having like the best valuable items on them and so I think that's just something Tarkov players like to do I don't really know actually honestly I really don't because I don't play Tarkov myself I don't really have any idea how the game is really played to be completely honest with you uh, however I know people are upset about this within DMZ and I'm a little upset by it as well because I don't really want to go through those missions again even if they are going to be easier the second time around I don't really know a good balance for this. Maybe they'll decide not to do this because of how much backlash there is. But then again, we don't have all the information on how exactly this is going to pan out uh, since they said in the next blog post, they're going to give us more details. So I definitely have some questions about this. So first of all, if we are going through the same missions again with the same type of challenges, are we going to be getting different rewards? Because that I can see. I can see that being the case, and I don't think I'll be too upset by that if they're going to be giving us different rewards. Now, you got to remember that each mission that you complete does give you a, re a reward other than an XP bonus. So some of these rewards can be like emblems, calling cards, contraband weapons that you can use to like load yourself up when you get into a DMZ match, keys, which of course can open up new locations and get better loot, stronghold key cards, and you can even get operator outfits for completing these missions. So if I'm going back to a mission where my reward the first time around was an operator skin, what will my reward be the second time around? Because if they're going to make it where... If you complete the mission once, you get yourself that XP bonus, you're going to get yourself that cosmetic reward, whatever it may be, uh, like an emblem calling card or a contraband weapon, everything I just mentioned there, right? You get that the first time around. The next season starts. You complete that mission again. Like, what if you don't get anything? What if they don't give you another reward? What if it's just an XP bonus? If that's the case, I will be pissed because each season we have a level cap. Here at season one, our level cap is 250. And to be completely honest with you guys, it wasn't too hard to reach 250. I reached it so long ago that I've stopped playing Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0 for like what feels like a month, honestly. Like, there's no point of even playing the game right now because of my level cap. That's part of the reason why it's so boring to play Call of Duty nowadays is because of that level cap each season. So, if you're going to make us go through these missions again and we're not getting new rewards every time and it's just going to be XP bonuses then people are going to fall off DMZ pretty fast because we have a level cap and XP is practically useless within Call of Duty the past few years. Like, we have not had a proper prestige system within this game. It's been a seasonal prestige system, which is like the stupidest thing ever. And so, I don't understand what they're trying to do here with the mission progression obviously it sucks we're gonna have to unlock our insured weapons again but at this i mean like i said i haven't even earned my second one yet so i've been so used to just using the default first insured weapon slot <sighs> like i really don't understand how this is gonna work and i also wonder can you earn the current rewards in like the new season so when the new season starts and you didn't complete every mission yet already are you going to be able to still earn those same rewards that's another thing i have to ask because are they just going to completely just give us new rewards uh, for each new season on the same missions i have no idea i really don't know i guess we'll have to wait until our next blog post how this is going to pan out but i'm not particularly happy about this just because i'm not someone who plays dmz religiously if you're someone who plays dmz religiously i guess i can't really see this be a big issue because it just makes you want to keep playing the game but think about it each season if if 
our insured weapon slots are in our tier mission progression and our contraband weapons keys and all that stuff's going to be reset each season people are not going to be that interested within dmz very long so i really hope they can be clear about that within the next blog post on what's actually going to happen i guess we'll have to wait and see but personally as of right now not a huge fan of this change uh, but we'll just have to wait and see how it goes, I guess. So anyway, that's it for the video, you guys. I kind of got on long enough here. It took me way too many attempts to try and record this, and I am really, really tired. I had a long day at work, and I would really appreciate if you guys left a like on this video, especially if you made it this far within the video. It does mean a lot to me, you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel for more Call of Duty videos, and of course, when it comes to news and updates regarding Season 2, uh, since we are going to be getting another blog post before the season so i'll definitely make sure i cover that here on the channel so make sure you're subscribed and you stay tuned for that video and you have notifications turned on whenever a video does go live and of course do not forget to follow me on twitter to stay up to date with me outside of youtube and of course don't forget to follow me on twitch you guys i do go live sometimes there's of course a link in the description as well for that so make sure you go ahead and check that out so anyway that is it for the video you guys i'll catch you on the next one peace out